in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are on the fifth day of Novena to the Holy Spirit. I know many of you are praying the Novena and preparing for the great feast of Pentecost. I, in my own way, giving a few reflections, a uh, few thoughts, uh, so that you may prepare with me. Because many of you are known to me, and some of you are my spiritual children. A uh, majority of you have been to my retreats and talks. So somewhere or other we have a connection. Hallelujah. So with that freedom I am speaking to you. Yesterday I was speaking about kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is an experience of the Holy Spirit through which we have the reign of God, the reign of Jesus and the Father. And thus we are in the kingdom. We know there is an enemy to that. That enemy is devil, Satan. Devil never likes that we are in Christ Jesus. Devil never likes that we are saved. The, he never likes that we receive the Holy Spirit. So the big enemy to the Holy Spirit is Satan. Hallelujah. He has power. And also he has kingdom. I, I think when I learned the Bible and theology, after God, it is Satan that has power. You know who Satan was. You must read uh, chapter 14 of Isaiah. Uh, he's called Lucifer. That means the one who was holding the light. The light bearer. That's the meaning of that. You know, first God created the angels. The invisible beings in heaven. And their main purpose was, uh, their aim was to worship God. And this man, Lucifer, refused uh, to worship God. In his pride, he said, I can be God. This is the temptation of every human being from the beginning. Adam and Eve, we know. Satan came and told, if you eat this forbidden fruit, you shall be gods. Who came? This Satan who lost the attempt to become gods. If you read, you can see, he said, I'll climb up the heavens. I'll sit on the throne and all will come and worship me. That was the desire of uh, Lucifer. But he fell. We read uh, with the three parts of the stars. That means uh, one third of the angels was put down from heaven on earth. Uh, from heaven, he was put down to the earth with the angels. We call fallen angels. And this Satan is trying to bring many people to his group. That group is called the kingdom of Satan. We read in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus was casting out devil by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the finger of God. That's what is said in Matthew chapter 12. And the Pharisees came and criticized, saying, he was doing all these miracles by the power of Satan, especially the captain of uh, the devils, uh, Beelzebubul. That was, the, that was the accusation. And then Jesus said, If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How can his kingdom stand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means Jesus very clearly says, Satan has a kingdom, an undivided kingdom. Jesus said, if they are divided, they cannot stand. So if any kingdom to stand, to persevere, it needs to be in unity, we know. In unity, we continue living. If divided, we perish. That's very clear. So Jesus said, in your Christian life, there will be an undivided force of the enemy, the Satan. And this is what is happening today. He is envious of Jesus himself and the kingdom of God. If you read, when you have time, you read Book of Revelation, uh, Apocalypse, chapter 12. We can see very, very clearly what was happening in that. Mary conceived Jesus. And devil was the one who was so angry. He knew that Jesus would crush the head. 
and it was already prophesied in Genesis chapter 315. So the devil wanted to destroy Jesus and the mother and went after them. But God protected both Mary and the child. And the devil became very angry. And we read in chapter, 70, chapter 12, verse 7, the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back. They did not prevail. There was no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, and who is called devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, was thrown down to earth with the angels. Hallelujah. You see the uh, names of Satan. Satan, devil, dragon, and the ancient snake. And one who deceives the world. That deceiver is today everywhere. We can see corruption, deception everywhere. Why there is corruption in the government? Why corruption in the church? Why corruption among the leaders? Why corruption in the family? It's a work of devil. Hallelujah. Because he is the liar and father of lies. You know that. John chapter 8, 44. He comes to destroy and kill. John chapter 10, verse 10. So he wants to kill us. What killing? Not the physical killing, of course. Behind physical healing also there is Satan. As I say, behind every suicide, behind every murder, every abortion, there is devil working. Devil doesn't like life because God is the life giver. And much more, he hates someone having the divine life. We by baptism have the divine life. And devil is envious. He thinks always regrets of his life in heaven. Uh, he was the light bearer before God. So when he sees somebody in light, in grace, he's envious, surely. He wants to destroy that person and take away that light and life from that Christian, that person. That is a work of devil. That's why he comes with all kinds of temptation. So he tries to make that person sin because sin is the block. Sin is made through the various desires of the flesh. You know, like the Holy Spirit, uh, Satan also is spirit. The spirit cannot work simply in the air. It needs an object. Uh, the devil or the Holy Spirit works in our body. Holy Spirit works in our body, surely. We know that. When the Holy Spirit comes, we have good thoughts, good words, good actions, and we are good. When the evil spirit, devil comes, we think bad and speak bad and do bad. Hallelujah. So it is in our body, both the spirits are working. And when the evil spirit, devil, the dragon see that we are the light of the world. We are the soul of the earth. We are in Christ Jesus. We are carrying the light Christ. He regrets of his life. And he wants to destroy that person. This is your work. That's why we have to be on guard against Satan, the enemy of the Holy Spirit. And we see again in the, Acts of the, the, the book of Revelation chapter 12, uh, the Satan that fell down from heaven on earth is making these problems. Even Jesus said that. We read in Luke chapter 10 verse 17. Verse 18, sorry. When the disciples came, came back and told, uh, after the, uh, working for evangelization, even the devils are subject to us. Jesus said, good. Uh, I'm happy that you're casting out devils. No devil can touch you, but make sure that your name is written in the book of life. And there Jesus said, I saw Satan falling down from heaven. Nothing will hurt you. Hallelujah. Jesus was seeing in spirit how these angels, fallen angels, with the Lucifer falling down from heaven to earth. And we see that's why the first pope, Peter, 
in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Satan is prowling around, walking around like, sat like a uh, lion to devour people. You must read sometime. Now I don't have time to read. Uh, book of Job. Uh, Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. You know, Job was a righteous person. And we see in both chapters, when the sons of man came to God, Satan also came. It's not about heaven. I tell you what is happening. When we part from this world, we the persons, uh, we leave the body here, the body goes to a tomb, buried or burned. But our soul, soul means our person, personality. And we go for judgment to God. And when we go there, we should know there are two people to claim for our souls. One is Jesus. Another one is Satan. Jesus will say, this person is mine because my spirit was reigning over him. He was praying. He was doing good works. He never committed sin. He's innocent, etc., etc. All good things, what we do in our life will be told by Jesus and say, this is mine and take to heaven. On the other side, suppose we lived in sin, breaking the commandments of God, not loving God, not loving the church, not loving others. Satan will count all this and claim for us. That is true. And Satan will simply sometimes come with a false accusation. Here we see Satan came and said, you know why Job is worshipping God and loving God? Because he has plenty of much money. Oh, he has mansions, he has cows, camels, and many animals. And he's very rich. He has a good wife and children. So he's happy. He's saying, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus. Come on, take all this wealth. Then you will see. And God permitted it. Here we see God sometimes permit these kind of temptations. Sometimes bankruptcy. We may lose our job, work. He has a purpose behind it. Through that, he's testing our faith in him. That's why he allowed Satan to remove all that. You know, the house fell down, children died, all the camels and cows died, animals died. And then he said, all this was given by God. I did not bring anything to this world. God gave, God took away. But he did not commit sin. He did not curse God. He praised God on the contrary. Second chapter again, uh, the Satan came and said, look at this man. Uh, he lost everything. Mm. And, but his body is okay. He's healthy. If you touch his body and pray, you will see he will curse God. And God allowed Satan to do that. He got leprosy all over the body. You can just imagine with the leprosy, you are suffering. All scars and wounds with the pus and blood. And uh, flies and mosquitoes coming. And then his wife even said, Oh man, curse God and die. And you know that good man, just man said, When God gave us good things, we praise God. And there uh, are evil things or bad things also, we must praise God. He was advising his uh, beloved wife. Now if you look at that, we can see how when Job lived a righteous life, Satan was bringing accusation against him. Imagine, even if he was a good charismatic, loving God and uh, loving the neighbor, helping the poor, uh, helping the poor, praying much, devil can bring accusation. That's why we read in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 12, John says, Now salvation power has come. The kingdom of God is come. Authority of God is come. The accuser of our brothers is cast out. Amen. Accuser of our brothers. That means accuser is devil. Devil accuses and say, this man committed sin, that sin. But Jesus will scrutinize and find out if it's true or not. <laughs> because he's a liar. And if he finds out that he is really in sin, 
the devil will claim for us. And how we can conquer the Satan uh, and our what is called flesh and the world. Very clearly, verse 11. They conquered him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. Two things, the blood of Christ. We may ask, the blood of Christ was spilled on Calvary 2,000 years ago. No, my children. The blood of Christ is available here, right now, when I'm speaking. If you really believe, Romans chapter 3 verse 25. Blood of Christ is available for those who believe. We know at the Holy Mass, every day the priest taking the wine says, this is my blood. The power of the blood <coughs> is radiating the whole atmosphere. <coughs> that is everywhere. So my children, you must know the blood of Christ is available <coughs> for those who believe. Believe in the Holy Eucharist. <coughs> believe in the presence of Christ everywhere. And say, blood of Christ, protect me from the evil one. You remember when we had COVID? Pope Francis said, inject yourself, vaccinate yourself with the blood of Christ. It's true. We can uh, what call, protect ourselves by the blood of Christ. So the blood of Christ is available for those who believe. So the testimony of life, <coughs> only I told you what is that testimony. The testimony that Jesus is in us. To make sure that Jesus is in us and we are in Jesus. That is the testimony. 1 John chapter 5 verse 11. We have a testimony in us. That is Jesus in us. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. There will be a test for you. What is that test? If you believe that Jesus Christ is in you, you pass the test. And if you don't believe, you lost the test. So, every moment, 24 hours, 365 days, keeping the hand on the chest, we must be convinced and believe and proclaim that Jesus is in us. Hallelujah. That is the testimony. I belong to Jesus. Jesus is mine. And I am Jesus. And if you have that testimony, we can overcome devil. Devil cannot touch. That's what Jesus said. So, my children, let's conquer the enemy of the Holy Spirit. Always. The enemy comes to the desires of the flesh and the desires of the world. We read very clearly in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Verse Fifteen to seventeen. Do not love the world and the things of the world. If anyone loves the world and the love of the Father is not in him, all that is in the world, sensual lust, enticement for the eyes, and the pretentious life is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world and its enticement are passing away, but whoever Thus the will of God remains forever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So my children, I pray that you may be aware of the kingdom of Satan. And may never go to the kingdom of Satan, but always remain in the kingdom of Christ. The book of wisdom, chapter 1, 7, we read, The whole universe is filled with the Holy Spirit. In 1 John 5.19, we read, the whole world is under the power of Satan. Hallelujah. So both these are in this earth, on this earth, and around us. It's our duty to go to the Holy Spirit and open the heart and say, fill me with your power, fill me with your love. Come, Holy Spirit. And if you go to the opposite side and say, come, devil, come, Satan, surely will come. There are Satanists who do, who do that. The worshippers of Satan. My children, you should not be sure. Always open your heart. 
to the living water that flows from the heart of Jesus. Close your eyes and pray. Lord Jesus, thank you and praise you for each of my children who are listening to this episode. I was speaking of the power of the enemy. Lord, I pray, as you taught us to pray, keep them away from the power of the enemy, from the power of the devil. Lord Jesus, they are exposed, they are in the world, but they don't belong to the world. As you are no more belong to the world. I pray that you, they belong to you only, to love of you and love of neighbor. By keeping the commandments of God, they really remain in you. Lord Jesus, cover them with your grace and power. Protect them from the evil one. Open their inner eyes. Enable them to see the power of the blood of Christ everywhere. But if they are working in the kitchen, or they are going to the market, they are driving in the car, or they are simply sitting and sleeping, always enable them to experience the radiation of the power of the holy blood that is spilled on every altar in the holy mass when the priest says this is my blood yes lord on more than 500,000 altars priest says this is my blood this is my blood i know this whole earth has the radiation of the blood of christ i dip those who listen to my words now all their family people relatives friends neighbors and their country, and all the countries, and the whole world. Come, Holy Spirit. Come with the grace and power. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come with your power. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come with your power. Holy Spirit, come with your power. Holy Spirit, come with your power. Come, Holy Spirit, let your power fall. Come, Holy Spirit, let your power fall. Let your power fall. Let your power fall. Jesus, in your name, I cast out the power of evil, the power of Satan from the hearts of these people. You spit of sin, depart. You spit that comes with the bad thoughts, bad imagination, depart from the hearts of these people. You spit of evil. You Satan, Lucifer, that comes. Uh, to deceive them, to deceive the family and the whole world, depart. You, liar, father of life, depart from the hearts of these people. You, the author of all corruption, depart from them and their family and their uh, church and the society. You, spit of adultery, you, spit of murder, you, spit of abortion, or all immorality, depart from the hearts of these people. You, spit of disobedience. Disobedience to the commandments of God, disobedience to God, disobedience to his superiors and authority. In the name of Jesus, I command you to depart. You are no place in the hearts of these Christians who belong to Jesus. Depart right now. In the name of Jesus, with the power and authority in my priesthood. Joining my prayer with the praise of all the priests in heaven and on earth. You, Satan, you big deceiver, right now I make you powerless. And in the name of Jesus, cast you out from the hearts, lives, and families of these people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Kadishum Hallelujah. Malala. Lamba la 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 you who crush the head of Satan right now, protect these, your children, my children, from all evil. Amen.